People often get confused about Google Analytics and Google Search Console. So inside analytics, you'll see reporting on page views and bounce rates and time on site and all that stuff. So that's basically data about your visitors. And inside Google Search Console, we'll mainly find things that have to do with the more technical aspects of your site. So basically, you need both accounts. And this guide might get a little technical, but don't let that scare you. Ah! Now let's compare the two side by side and see exactly what data you find in Google Analytics and inside Google Search Console. So in order to see all the reporting that I'm going to show you here in a second, you need to turn on demographic data in Google Analytics. That's easily done with a few clicks as I show you here in the screen. Let's get started. So we'll quickly run through this list over here and we'll start with queries. So we can see what people are actually searching or typing into Google to get to our website. In analytics, we can only see this if we have linked it to Google Search Console. So all these data are actually coming from Google Search Console. So we can see it both places. You go to acquisition, search console, queries, and here you'll have your queries and you can see the number of clicks and impressions and so on. And if you go into search console, you'll go to performance and then you have the queries tab here where you can see the same data. Links is something you can only see in Google Search Console. So over here we have the data for external links and over here for internal links. That means links pointing from other websites to your site and over here we talk about the internal links which is the links between your own articles. You can also see top linking sites, the sites that link the most to you and what they actually write in the anchor text. That's this little snippet of text that they use when people click to get to your site. If you want to remove URLs from Google, you click removals here, and this is also something you can only do in Search Console. Speed issues is also in both places. Here in Search Console, you click on speed, and you'll see reporting right here. You can see I have some pretty slow URLs here that I need to look into, and it's divided up between mobile and desktop. You can open this report here to see much more detailed data. And in Google Analytics, you'll go to behavior, site speed, and then you'll have some different things you can report on here in regards to the speed of your site. Organic traffic is also found in both Analytics and Search Console. If you only want to see the organic visitors here in Google Analytics, you switch off all users here and you scroll down here till you find organic traffic, there it is. So now Google Analytics will only be reporting on the organic traffic. And inside Google Search Console is pretty easy because it will only show data for organic traffic. You can't see anything else because it's only showing you what's happening with your traffic from Google. So all these numbers here are from organic traffic. So for all the other traffic sources, as I told you, you can't see that here in Google Search Console, you'll have to go to Analytics. And instead of ticking off here for the search traffic or the organic traffic, you can focus on something like referral traffic, tablet traffic, and many other things. Real-time traffic is another cool metric you can see inside Google Analytics. Here you can see that I have 13 visitors on this site right now, the majority coming from mobile. And you can see here which pages they are visiting, and you can even see down here on the map where in the world they're coming from. That's a super, super cool feature. Another report we also find exclusively in Analytics is age and gender data. So here, for example, you can see the age demographics for my visitors and it makes most sense to click this pie chart here so you can get it in a nice pie chart. You can also see it for gender. That's also very useful information when you want to know who your visitors are. And for geographical data, we have language data and location data right here in Google Analytics. So you can see where in the world your visitors are coming from. So you can see here, the majority of my traffic is from the United States. Then we have United Kingdom, India and Canada and so on. We also find data about devices here in Google Analytics. You can see how my traffic is divided between mobile, desktop and tablet traffic. Again, I just clicked the pie chart here because it makes more sense when we're dealing with pretty large segments. And if you want to see browser and, and OS data, you go to technology browser and OS. That's also only for analytics data. The majority of my visitors are coming from Chrome and Safari. Exit pages is also a really cool feature that you only find in analytics. You'll be able to see here which pages the most people on your site are using when they leave the site. So this means that this is the last URL they're watching. Maybe you should dig into here if you can do anything on these URLs to keep people on your website. Finally, we have site search. 
really helpful data if you have that turned on. I haven't gotten any search data for this website here, but if you turned it on, you know you have a search field on your site, you'll be able to see here exactly what people are typing into the search field. That's great data to have because it will tell you what people are looking for and maybe it'll also tell you what people are not finding on your site. It's also only in Google Analytics. Something that often frustrates people when they're working with Google Analytics and Search Console is that the data are not the same. Even though you pull up the same report and you're monitoring clicks in Analytics and in Search Console, the data does not match. So why is that so? That's basically because in Google Search Console, they're working with what we call pre-click data. They show impressions and they show what's happening on your site before people actually click on the search result page. And Google Analytics, is only showing post-click data. So there's some technical differences there. Just be aware of this so you don't get too frustrated in the process. This also means that if you don't even have Google Analytics installed, you can still see the data inside Google Search Console because they work independently. It also means that if you have set up Google Analytics in the wrong way, let's say you put in the snippet of code twice and now you have double the amount of traffic or it's just messed up in some way, you still have good click data inside Google Search Console, it will still show correct data for you. Another reason why the data might not match is because in Google Search Console, you always see the reporting according to Pacific Daylight Time. So that's the time zone we're working with. And in Google Analytics, you can set your own time zone that can be 12 hours apart. So let's say you saw a spike in traffic, in Google Analytics, you might see that on one day and in Search Console, it might be attributed to the next day or the day before. So that can cause some discrepancies as well. So overall, when you're working with the data inside Google Analytics or if you're using Search Console, when you're working with all this data, look for tendencies and trends. Don't get too caught up in a specific number. It's not all that important if you had 500 or 550 visitors to one page. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything. Just pay attention to what is the best performing content. And did you have a spike in traffic? And where did that traffic come from? You know, these overall trends and statistics that can actually drive decisions and help you make smarter decisions. Let's take a look at the most useful data inside Google Analytics and in a second we'll get back to Search Console. So for us bloggers, we need to pay attention to how many page views we have and what articles are doing the best in Google. So that's of course one of the main reports you'll pull up on a weekly or monthly basis. Something else you can pay attention to is the bounce rate per browser and per device because that'll let you know if your site is struggling in some browser or in some platform and maybe your site is not showing right. Maybe your content is breaking up in the wrong way in the design in a specific browser that sends you a lot of traffic. By looking at the bounce rate, you'll see if people are leaving your site right away where they're coming from a Safari browser and you'll know that you need to look into that and see what's going on there. You might also want to take a look into the referrals statistics because here you can see what other websites are sending traffic to your site and now you can send them a thank you email and maybe you can even develop a relationship with them in order to get more of that good traffic. And something that people don't think about in Google Analytics is that you can actually dig into what topics and what areas of content you are ranking for. For example, you can see if Google is actually ranking your site for your money, your life topics, because in here you can segment that and you can quickly see if you're able to rank for financial terms and stuff like that, where there's a good deal of money to be made from advertising. This will also show you what other verticals you're ranking in, and that can be some great data to show people if you're selling ads directly. Let's say you're selling the ad space, the top banner or side banners or whatever, and you're selling these ads directly to brands, you can show them how many page views or how much, how much traffic you have within their specific vertical, because you can find that data in here. But overall, I'll advise you to not sell ads directly because working with premium ad networks is just way easier and you can make a ton of money with that. I have a lot of videos on that. Check out the video up here where I'm showing some of these ad networks. Let's get back for a second to talk about Google Search Console and what's the most used reports inside this system. I'd say that I spend the most time looking into how many impressions I get for my newer sites. 
I'm always starting new websites. I think over the last 12 months, I've been starting four or five new websites. And the first sign of life you can see for a new website is that you're starting to get these impressions for your site. You can see them before you get the clicks because it will show you when you start to show up on page number five or four or three and two in Google. And you're slowly moving up to the top of Google and you'll start seeing some clicks soon. That's very motivating, especially early on when you're starting out with a new site because you won't see any clicks for the first many, many months. I have a video up here that shows you exactly how quickly you see traffic to a new website. It takes seven, eight or nine months from starting to write the first article until you see the traffic. Check out that because there's some real interesting data that I pulled for you. I also did a video specifically about Google Search Console, so I won't dive too much into what you can do with it in this video. Check out that video up here. In that video, I'm showing you how you can use your own data inside Google Search Console to find out what topics to write on. It's a gold mine of data that nobody else has access to because only you have access to your data inside Google Search Console. And in there, you can also see if somebody is trying to attack your site and trying to mess with your site. Google will tell you if there's any penalties or manual actions being taken on your site. That's very important to pay attention to. So definitely check out that other video about Google Search Console. I hope you'll subscribe to my videos because I have much more coming your way. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. See you guys next time.